Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for the awesome chat at awesomecast.net. And we got a very special one. This is the show, of course, usually we're talking with people typically in Pittsburgh doing awesome things, uh, making awesome things, have awesome companies, have awesome ideas, uh, doing awesome websites, podcasts, whatever the case may be. And and, and, and I want to have a little bit of an opening to kind of uh, do, you know, just have a platform, see what we can do. So we're going to talk with somebody who has something awesome on the horizon that he's brainstorming wants to get this out there and actually wants some feedback from fellow podcasters podcast listeners maybe uh anybody that might be interested in this uh kind of idea we're going to talk about podcasting and psas with christopher whitlash but of course please check out everything at awesomecast.net uh follow us on twitter for both the awesome cast and awesome chat uh we're on itunes spreaker i think we're very soon going to be on iHeartRadio for this show at least the other one is as well video on youtube for, uh, look for the awesome cast on there and of course you can contact us uh, drop us a line at awesome cast or follow us on the social medias google plus facebook the facebook group as well you can chat with us share some stories your awesome thing of the week etc etc and please let us know is there anybody you think we should be talking with that is doing awesome stuff in pittsburgh in technology and social media whatever the case may be so let's get into it our guest this week he's a guy that we've done some work together i guess yes, you yes. we could say right yes we have <laughs> chris, quite a bit of work chris whitlatch with the pittsburgh foundation of course we worked on uh for two and a half years the unsung the nonprofit news show several videos psas like, like we're talking about today for instance so uh how you doing i'm doing great thanks for having me on awesome cast i think this is uh i was on awesome chat once but this is my first well, this is your awesome your, cast so. the, the awesome cast once this is the awesome chat Oh, I'm sorry. So I was on Awesome Cast once. Right. And now I'm on Awesome Chat. <laughs> I'm just, I'm double awesome. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so so first, what is the general idea here, podcasting and PSAs? So uh, as you know, Mike, I'm always looking at ways that nonprofits can, can use technology better, uh, mm-hmm. can use it effectively. And uh, what I found is that with their PSAs, uh, a PSA, public service announcement, short video, uh, typically outlining some kind of issue topic, some way for the public to get educated, informed, or involved. In the past, these have usually been played on traditional media. And the FCC actually, when you were uh, applying for a license, uh, made you or required you at the time to provide a certain amount of content for public access. Now, those rules have kind of uh, uh, been relaxed, uh, so there's not as much time devoted to PSAs on, on traditional media. At the same time, nonprofits are, are sort of growing in content that they're, they're producing, they're producing it better, they're becoming better storytellers, uh, and they're kind of don't have outlets for their messages as as much as they may have done in the past. Mm -hmm. And so I've uh, been kicking around an idea for uh, alternate distribution for public service announcements or an alternate distribution network. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, this does involve uh, traditional media. So a television station can't necessarily give up the airtime without a nonprofit paying for it, and it's very expensive. A radio station can't uh, give up their airtime because it's very expensive for a nonprofit. But they do have uh, alternate outlets that are content hungry, such as their social media accounts. And if they would take these PSAs and put them in the flow of their social media, you could possibly get um, as many or more viewers uh, for that information. And um, the community, the stations would be participating in, in community information. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe we're tapping probably the best online outlets right now for disseminating information. And that is the podcasters, the guys like you. Interesting. So, so, so uh, kind of dive in. So, so what, what is kind of the process like? Uh, so there's just not enough room right now with the main broadcasters. Like you're you're usually addressing like 
the local guys like here in Pittsburgh would be like KDK, TIE, yes. PXI. Yes. So, so do you, as uh, the representative for uh, uh, you know uh, Pittsburgh Foundation, get in Westmoreland? I know we were looking at a little bit of video here on the video version. Uh, uh, do you or that person that that organization just approaches them saying, "Hey, we have a PSA. Do you have a spot for it?" How, what is that process typically? So typically, the process is um, we have this PSA. What can you do for us? And most of the time, the nonprofit uh, will get back the answer, well, we can offer you discounted air times. Um, so it's not like they're getting free access to the networks. And if they are getting free access, they're, then they're in the this, this sort of downtime areas of, of the network. So, you know, somewhere late, late, late at night, early Saturday morning, wherever a local affiliate could possibly give them airtime. But most of the time they'll ask for, you know, some sort of compensation for that airtime because it's very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem is, is that nonprofit budgets are tight, as you well know. Mm -hmm. um, they're stretched to the limit. They're trying to do more with less all the time. Um, at the same time, there are more and more of these messages that, that need to get out that are being produced. And nonprofits have become comfortable producing content, uh, video content, social media content. Uh, and so they're able to produce more of this content. So there's more demand for this precious airtime. So it's, it's just not possible to sort of get it out in the normal fashion that it has been in in the past it, it is interesting um i don't know how much stuff i've worked on over the last few years be it nonprofits or other clients that we we've put together stuff for television that shot with cameras or, or, or cell phone cameras flip cams at yes certain points. yes i mean the technology right. is really i mean it's really is, there that you can produce a, a real high right, quality right. video and, and this is this is tip this this is becoming typical at this point i think people would be surprised how many things they see on tv is filmed with i mean we're i'm watching wrestling programs where they are filming their promos for a wrestling a, a prime time wrestling program uh on an iphone it was obviously an iphone and that's just <laughs> how they're doing it now I mean, that's, that's, and then, you know, the PSAs are following suit, the nonprofits are following suit and uh, uh, able to put that out there. That's, that's tremendous. Yeah, I think, you know, that, that technology uh, has really come around to where they can afford it mm -hmm. and they've gotten better with it. Um, they're using their own social media networks effectively, but they're really limited to their, their network, so their reach. And getting beyond that reach is, is, is really the key that will, um, you know, cause, a change in some way, um, uh, an impact mm -hmm. in the community. And so if they, if they can get out of outside of their normal networks, then that message will have greater resonance, mm -hmm. wider audiences. Let's talk about that effectiveness. Cause I, I think that's kind of an argument, uh, that's, that's been being made a lot for advertising in general. And I think there's definitely kind of a one-to-one -one about advertising these days versus nonprofit. I mean, it's basically what they're doing, right? Is they're getting yes. a message out. It's advertising yes. for the nonprofits. We call it a PSA, whatever it is. It's still advertising. It, you're just not buying soap or whatever the case may be, right? Yes. So, But it's branding. Yes. It's et cetera. It's, it, it, it's, it's a story. So why – and you're somebody who, you know, has a lot of experience with getting that message out on social media, um, you know, with with you know what we did with Unsung, what we've seen uh, Day of Giving. I know you're you're very very involved with uh, that implementation. Uh, what are you seeing as far as reactions from that versus Are you seeing anything even these days from from television spots? Well, I, you know, you still see you still see the um, the television spots, and I think they still make an impact. But you see them from from very big organizations, national organizations. So somebody like the American Red Cross, or the one that's really running, I think, heavily now. It probably is running too heavily. I think people are getting tired of it. Is the Ad Council's um, asthma uh, awareness uh, PSA, the one with the fish. That you know, I think everybody when it comes on goes, oh god, not this one again, because um, they just put it. They, they've had too I, honestly, they've had too much budget. I mean, I should right, if right. they could spread that around to other organizations, you know, it would be more effective. I think. <laughs> but um, so you're still seeing that, and they're paying for that time. They're paying for that time. Um, it is budgeted mm -hmm. in there. Um, with a local organization, you're not dealing with the same amount of 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 uh, budget you're not dealing with the same reach it's a very specific reach right and they just it's cost prohibitive i mean it's a choice of could we you know put a a psa on air or you know could we you know feed a family 
So mm-hmm. it, it's down to, to really that level. And you see some get on the air occasionally and, and some, are, you know, some might be paid with discounts because the media is very good at offering a nonprofit discount. Um, so you might see the food bank on the air every so often. Um, and they do still offer some PSAs uh, in certain times. But, you know, the rotation may be if you get a free PSA, you might be on once a month. Um, and so if somebody is only seeing your message once a month, is it really, you know, it's like the tree, tree falling in the woods, right? <laughs> <laughs> did, did anybody really see it? Right. Cause so. it's, when, when it comes to those, uh, kind of advertising pro- platforms, when we talk about branding, like how many commercials you see that don't really sell you the bottle of Mountain Dew, but it's the brand and it's getting the brand in your mind. Yes. I mean, it, it's that repetition that gets that in, in, in the back of your head. And that's, you know, what was it with the asthma thing? You know, that's in the back of your head, but unfortunately, maybe too, too far of a point, for instance. Right. So um, it, it's real interesting to see. So 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 we have that. And, and then it, plus I'm somebody who's a cord cutter and a lot of your millennials <laughs> are cord cutters or, yes. or never connected or whatever the case may be. Yes. And I might see some PSAs on Hulu say or sometimes you know over the air of course i'm going to see them but i really there, there's one thing i can think of that i regularly watch over the air and uh and i think that time's bought up <laughs> to be mm-hmm. honest and uh you know how are you you know that's a big gap right i, th- I think so and let me ask you a question okay you know you're a cord cutter mm-hmm. um so are you interacting with uh local news in some form or fashion and where are you doing that now uh let's well, twitter very basically twitter and whatever that's happened i mean it's funny because i don't watch any of the news programs but i was just uh uh retweeting scott scott harbaugh's uh uh from pxi's uh, uh everybody else's weather pictures today for instance right like they still got me as far as that goes even though i'm not necessarily tuning into their program yeah and i probably shouldn't you know we probably shouldn't talk about this i don't know if i want to let them in on this but their social media has become um very valuable uh right that is where their engagement is coming from it's not necessarily coming from from television even if it is coming from television it probably has a social media component to it so you're probably on the phone tweeting out uh what you're engaging with on the on the television right um that content i don't believe in my personal opinion i don't believe that they are producing enough out of their own organization as far as news content to fill up um their social media uh I think there's more time there. Um, I think that time is valuable, and I think if they would devote some of that time to a nonprofit PSA, they'll um, they'll have good content for their social media, obviously, mm-hmm. and they will um, be helping the community, which is you know part of the spirit of of uh, of media. Okay, okay. So so okay from from there. Uh, you know, we talked about a little bit about the, your engagement, of course, what you've seen in, in comparison to television and everything. So uh, I'm a podcaster, and I, as I am, hello. <laughs> so, 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 what is in it, kind of, for the podcaster to do something like this? So, from a nonprofit's standpoint, the benefit of reaching out to a, a podcaster is you have your own audience, right? You have your own networks, and your audiences probably don't have, I mean, they have probably have some overlap, but they don't have a lot of overlap. And so they're able to reach new audiences for that messages. I think I would like feedback as far as what a podcaster could get out of carrying some of, uh, some of this nonprofit content um, mm-hmm. as part of their show um, in some form or fashion or as part of their social media in some form or fashion. Uh, what I'd really like to know is how to make this beneficial to you because it's still right. an idea and, right. it's, and it's really, you know, needs the feedback that you guys offer. What I believe that a nonprofit would do would turn around and take your, um, your product, your content to their audience via their networks as well. And I think that has somewhat of a benefit for a podcaster. Um, there is, you know, generically, why does a brand get involved with um, with community activities like the United Way or anything like that? Well, it's corporate uh, corporate goodwill, brand goodwill, that kind of thing. It's, right, it's right, involvement right, right. in their community. Right. And I think podcasters are very involved in their local community. So this is sort of a next step. But really, I need to hear from you guys because um, I will... I will take this back to the nonprofit saying, hey, if we did it this way, it would be content that a podcaster might mm-hmm. might use then. Uh, I, I guess 
and from there, uh, if I can throw out some, I've been thinking about this since we talked about the idea last last week. Uh, and as a podcaster, what would what would make me want to jump in? You know, other than what you've already said. Also, the question is, what kind of content are we seeing? Are we seeing like video ads like this, audio versions? Like, is it is it going to be like the content that you guys are already making for TV and radio, or is is there you know some other interactive thing? Is there? Do you guys have uh, you know? Do you think there's going to be campaigns that we can kind of jump in on as part of it? Uh, you know what what's what's kind of the brainstorm there so far? Yeah, uh, all good questions. So uh, what I've counseled nonprofits to do is keep the content as flexible as possible. So if you're you know you need to produce for the right amount of time. So you need to be right. in 15 seconds or 30 seconds. Um, typically, not a minute. You know, 15 and 30 is, is typically what we're looking at, right? Um, having that content available in multiple ways. So um, a standard, you know, video ad that you might see on uh, on a television program that has the, the audio in it. Maybe it's just the video portion uh, with a script. And then you, uh, as the podcaster, would pick that up and, and sort of give it your own spin. Um, I believe that you know your audience is better and you could communicate these messages uh, in better language to those audiences. Um, so giving it to, a, to it in that fashion, maybe it's just the audio. And so if it's an audio podcast, you have thir- you know 15 or 30 seconds worth of audio that you could drop in somewhere within your program. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's just you're going on air and talking about this like you and I are doing it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's other content out there that a podcast says, man, if I had this, um, if I had a photo, if I had a, a, a clip of this kind of sort, then I'd be more willing to, to sort of participate. Um, that is great feedback. Um, nonprofits need to adapt to the networks that they're using, obviously, and also the audiences that they're communicating to. And you know your audience is better than they will. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- one thing that I, I think about with this as an opportunity uh, is if you're a podcaster who maybe one day wants to be the, uh, to the point where they're supported by ads. And, and we've kind of done this ourselves and, and kind of uh, promoted friends, promoted uh, some of our own other projects, etc., as kind of placeholders to, and, and we're, we're, in, we're still in this process and, and, you know, always kind of figuring out, you know, how to, how to be, the, you know, get the advertisers, you know, uh, on shows that we're, we're currently doing. And, but we, you know, having that practice that's what i you know when you were saying it that's what i was thinking Mm -hmm. is is this a way is this practice is this also showing um you know a a a piece of content that an advertiser would um would engage with Mm -hmm. Um, i think i think it's very important to show you know you're not just what you know hey we've been doing this spot we're currently filling up psas it's almost how like we can say real ads work where, you know, you you don't have a Google ad on the side of your site. You have a PSA instead. They fill the space with it, right? Um, Hulu, whenever you can tell they're running out of ad buys for the month when <laughs> you have PSA after PSA. Uh, you know, but but it, it, it seriously is. Or if you're somebody who is an advertiser, you know, does have advertising already, and maybe you don't have the ad buys for all of your, you can fill in those spots. Fill in the gaps. Like it. You don't want to just not have an ad because it, maybe it'll mess with your format. I don't know how many podcasts I listen to says, oh, do we have a third ad this week? No. Okay, let's continue. Like the question gets asked in the middle of the show when they don't have the paper in front of them uh, from the producer. And it's like, well, you could have put something in there. You really could have. So that that's something I hadn't uh, really thought about from from your side of, of, of this um you know, that's kind of what I'm saying to the, the more traditional media is you, you have this space, you have this extra space. So use it and use it, um, you know, on behalf of, of someone doing good. And so I guess maybe it's the same pitch to, to you guys. You have some space, it's valuable, but if you have extra right. space, um, could you devote it on mm-hmm. behalf of a, a local nonprofit that is of interest to you as well? I mean, obviously not every, every piece of content is going to make sense for you or for your audience. Um, so right, right. You know, we need to match the best um, best content with, it's, it's, with the proper podcast. Yeah, so. like, like, do you put a drug abuse PSA in the middle of a beer podcast? You know, does that <laughs> entirely work, right? You know, does does Get In Westmoreland work in the middle of, of Should I Drink That? It's weird, weird double plug. I don't know, right but now, I'd but... love to hear the, the Should I Drink <laughs> It guys uh, um, 
uh, take on that because, well, maybe their audience could benefit from. That's right. I, I guess it is. Not, I, not that I'm not that I'm saying. I that. meant that to be kind of contrastting <laughs> and exactly, overlapping, but it really, know? in the long run, maybe it is. I mean, you have responsible drinking PSAs from Budweiser, yeah. etc. And not that I'm saying that that audience is necessarily, oh. you know. Uh, addicted or anything like that, which no, is, no, you know, but get in Westmoreland is, is helping to stop. I was more saying it's a substance and it's about substance abuse, so I wasn't sure how that would gel together. So, so not always, you know, I don't know if I'm mean, just sure of a lot of stuff that you know around the um language heavy wrestling mayhem show, do we want to stick certain <laughs> things in there, right? Like, right, how much is right. that really going to help? But then again, that is a whole nother audience that you're not reaching, right? You know, because you don't maybe talk to those people over there and and they do have i mean they you're, you're lining up with that audience because of their interests but they have other lives beyond that exactly and, and, exactly and so you know getting them some some additional education some awareness um perhaps you know we need to counsel the nonprofits that uh, we need to make sure that these are entertaining as well before right, they go right, into right. uh a podcast such as is wrestling mayhem or, or should i drink that so. uh what another idea that's come across like thinking on this since, since we talked about it is uh, kind of a creativity of course you know you talk about having assets and maybe they can like maybe do reads or something like that but I, I see this as depending on the podcast maybe a creative opportunity right okay to you know maybe the you know maybe maybe on the PSA side like you know hey let's let's hear your best commercial creative commercial you know from the podcast side of it uh, be it audio video whatever the case may be and, and that could be a way for somebody to stretch their legs and, and say a podcast does a really good skit commercial kind of thing maybe that becomes part of the poll and maybe so and then, and maybe you know maybe then the nonprofit. so okay you guys have created this content as the as the podcaster and maybe the nonprofit can then take that not only sharing it on 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 their networks but then pushing it up into this this ultimate distribution net alternative distribution network that right. hopefully we're you know creating with this mm -hmm. um so that you know other media might pick up some podcaster content which would be a great idea That'd for those good. other media companies and then through <laughs> that yeah exactly and then through that the podcaster gets gets some benefit gets some exposure if they if they were creative enough and and they're engaging with people outside of their own audience on other platforms so it could be interesting so so we're talking about uh, we're talking about scripts we're talking about uh, audio content we're talking about video content i could definitely see like like for me as 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 somebody and you know maybe me is something I want to kind of tinker with anyways you know uh, I I could see a lot of you know sharing the YouTube clips maybe if you guys are making little Instagram videos you know you know somebody's already kind of sitting there scheduling maybe their Hootsuite or their buffer for the week and just kind of slide in a couple of those in there right is that is that part of the idea too on the social media side maybe I th I think that's a, I think actually that would be a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, we're in, we're in an age where Twitter yeah, now it. Twitter now auto plays videos, guys. <laughs> this is even more important than it was a week ago. I think I think you're in an age where um, uh, nonprofits are are struggling with this, but yeah. they need to give up a little bit of control over their content. Um, they need to realize that that you know their audience has its own audience, and they need you know a, this is what's happening right mm -hmm. with the you know the the cool factor. It's it's the people taking over a piece of content. And uh, you know, adapting it, making their own, creating their own spinoff, their own take on it. And if if we could do that on behalf of of a nonprofit, then that content could then recycle back through those mm -hmm. those other networks as well. And um, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I think you know, any bit that helps a nonprofit learn on what content uh, is being consumed and, and how to make it. Um, and then getting their messages out to a wider audience. Any bit of that, any of those ideas are, are good ideas. Just kind of an idea. Uh, just kind of uh, just kind of reach out a little bit here, just for people to kind of see, you know, because I, I think a lot of people have in this space a lot of preconceived notions on what a PSA is, how things are working, you know, uh, you know, uh, how are people integrating into this kind of thing. Uh, who who's out there, be it Pittsburgh or otherwise, who you think is doing just killing it right now in non-profit PSA or not PSA ish, you know, kind of social media work. Who, who's somebody that I should look towards right now to see, see who's really kind of kicking ass. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I, uh, think we, I think uh, we can all every, do a better every, job. <laughs> every, everybody you're working with. Uh. <laughs> um, so there, there's a site called, um, hatch for good. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, very large foundation, um, lots of resources. 
uh, worked with uh, an agency to put this this site together. And what Hatch for Good does is uh, help nonprofits really get a handle on how to tell stories better. Okay. And so it teaches them, you know, how to form a story, what, you know, the, the hero's journey in regards to social impact storytelling. But what it also has, if you're looking for um, good storytelling, good PSAs, it has a a lot of different examples of of organizations that have have told their stories, and I think that's probably the best place I could point to for um, sort of samples of of nonprofits doing you know very good storytelling work. Awesome! It, it, it's like a uh, it looks like it's a Khan Academy for for or something. Yes, for, uh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. There. It takes it takes a nonprofit sort of step by step, uh, mm -hmm. you know, through building their their and, and and you know envisioning their story. But then it also takes them step by step on well, what are the distribution platforms for those stories? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, to our to our conversation today, you know, hopefully podcasters are one of those distribution networks that they're thinking of more. Awesome. So, like we said, this is kind of a, a two-sided street. This is kind of a, a partially formed idea, but I think, I think if nothing else, even without this platform, I think this is something maybe podcasters, people on social media should start looking at. How can I help? I have amassed all these followers. <laughs> I have this audience. <laughs> what should I do with all this? Use your with great with great Twitter followers comes great responsibility, right? <laughs> um, I always, you know, I always revert back to the the military training you know just give me 10 basically so you know oh, the, yeah. you always say drop and give me 10 well just give me 10 so if, if you would devote just 10 percent of your you know activity your social media activity your podcasting activity towards a, a non-profit of your choice it doesn't have to be my choice or, or your you know your choice your audience's choice um you, we would do a lot of good together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean i've seen I, I, even that i've seen i've seen some friends of ours have the, like there's there's been sites that you sign up and it will automatically tweet once a day, you know, yeah. about, about that thing, which it gets a little it, weird. Well, it gets static. Yeah, yeah, to that's me. the problem. Um, then it turns into more noise. But it, it but does. Still. It can turn into more noise. And I think you brought up a a, a very good point on. I mean, you guys are creative. Mm -hmm. You're creating content, and so if you can create, um, you know, better content, unique content, mm -hmm. that's far more effective okay. than. Than just sending out a stock tweet that uh, somebody has written, and that's another <laughs> side of things. I mean, when you talk about social media, uh, you know, a lot of it is like, hey, tweet about your friends, tweet about all people doing good things, share other people's content, so they will hopefully do in kind, right? Yes. But we don't talk about, you know, the nonprofits, the people that 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 could use this help maybe more than your buddy with a podcast. Please help your buddy with the podcast <laughs> and, and comment on it. And still, still too. help your buddy with but, the but podcast. But still, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely, and I think people just don't think about it. It just hasn't been invaded in the space in a lot of people's minds. And, uh, and and I think that's worth thinking about. So I'll kick it back to, to you guys. You know, how do we get that, that word out and how do we make it, um, you know, much more interesting to a podcaster so that we get more podcasters that w would do this on behalf of exactly of nonprofits. exactly what do you guys want what do you guys need uh what to, to really kind of get you know stoked flame of this uh maybe happening uh chris here has got the resources he's he's working it out uh he's he's, he's been a part of some big rollouts he, he can definitely handle this i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm willing to try but uh you know all the help is is appreciated mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um you know, definitely tweet at me with your ideas and, and we'll, you know, incorporate them into sure. this uh, this concept and hopefully, you know, fully bake it. Mm -hmm. and of <laughs> so. course, uh, you guys can comment on wherever you may find this video um, or audio or or uh, over at awesomecast.net uh, if you're finding the post over here. Uh, I, I'm at Sorgatron. I'll, I'll pass anything over to Chris as well and be help be part of that conversation as well. Anything I find anywhere, we'll, we'll definitely get pass over to him. But where uh, generally can they find you, Chris, on the Internet? Um, well, definitely on, on Twitter, uh, which is on the screen, I believe. Uh, it's probably the best place to get me. Um, you can also, you know, for find me for, for audio. That is <laughs> at C S W H I T L A T C H. Uh, you can also find me at the Pittsburgh foundation, which is my day job. Mm -hmm. Awesome. A anything else cool coming on? Uh, Cause I know you're, you're always working with different oh, nonprofits. Anybody you know, else local? I've got a lot of, you know, wild, big, hairy ideas out, out there that, uh, hopefully I'll be able to come back on and, <laughs> 
and share with you and <laughs> book them once a month in the future <laughs> so. up as a, they're like well we launched this this month i'll see you next month when this thing launches <laughs> so, uh <laughs> we, we're, we're trying you know that's that's what you do you just you know you, you try and um uh, you won't always succeed, but you'll always learn. You make it easy for me because I just share whatever you're doing and I'm helping a nonprofit. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> make friends in the nonprofits. It helps out. It makes you feel better. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, like I said, please communicate with us on this or at, Sor- or at, Sor- at AwesomeCast um, on the Twitters. Uh, look up AwesomeCast on the Facebook, on the Google+. And, of course, please look for the Awesome Chat on Sp- Speakers, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio sooner or later, on the YouTubes. Share this around. I think we're on Daily Motion if this is short enough. Uh, Facebook, wherever that may be. Be part of the conversation, especially we're looking at you podcasters. We really want to kind of get your ideas. What's missing from this? What What, what is the thing that, that you're like, I'd never do it if X, you know? Uh, um, you know, really, what what is a what is that part to, that, that's missing from this equation to really kind of bring it to the next level? And uh, let us know, anybody else you want to to talk with uh, uh, on this show that's doing cool things. It doesn't have to be in Pittsburgh, but we are very Pittsburgh focused. That's fine. Uh, in social media, technology, or just doing good things like Chris over here is. And actually, everything's all wrapped in with him. So <laughs> thank you, Chris Whitlatch, for joining us. He has been our awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.